Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us dealing with a loved one with memory loss. So with me today is Pam. We're at Mom's Community, and Pam's mom lives next door to mine. Pam's mom will be 93 tomorrow, and she is here because she had a stroke a little over a year ago. So good afternoon, Pam. Hello. So tell me about your mom, because she's here obviously for a different memory problem than my mom. Right. Um, My mom was diagnosed with vascular dementia six years ago, which she probably had it prior, 10 years prior to that. We started noticing some memory things, and she lived in her home in Concord and did not want to leave, but she had a couple falls that um, the last fall she had a very bad wound that she needed attention to, so she had wound care coming in. So we kind of started looking at places for her to go and um, just found Dallas Ranch. It was just the perfect fit. So we kind of told her why her leg was healing. She needed to move into this facility as they had people living there to take care of her leg. And um, that was very difficult. You know, she fought that. She was alert enough to know that that was um, definitely not the true story. Just a little fiblet. So anyway, we got here here. It was on December 14th, um, 2016. 2016, has it been? Oh, so she has been. Wow. She's been here longer than my mom. No, I'm sorry. No, she came, it was a year ago last Christmas. Yeah, so it was last year, Christmas. And then she had her stroke on March 4th of last oh, okay. year. And she was on the assisted living side. So she'd only lived there for four months or so. Yes. And... Um, after her stroke, um, she couldn't walk, she couldn't feed herself, she couldn't talk. It was just kind of a hit or miss, wasn't sure, and she truly is a very strong gal and recovered. Um, she was in the hospital for a month, and then at um, recovery over at um, Concord at Stonebrook for a month and a half doing physical therapy. And then she recovered, but the stroke obviously affected the dementia a little bit, which we knew it was going to progress it so she um came back to dallas ranch but in the memory care side and so um she's here and she um some days thinks she works here which is great (laughs) she has a purpose and some days she um is ready to go home tomorrow's her birthday and we're going out to lunch but she was hoping to be home for her birthday but i told her um that you know probably in another week or so she'll be going home so we kind of just do that as she asked we prolong her you know, in about five days, you'll be going. Um, so that's kind of where we're at right now. So the longest five days. So you had something interesting happen earlier with her. She, you said she remembered that she had a stroke a year ago. Yes. Today she said, well, I was hoping to be home for my birthday. And I said, oh, I heard from the doctor. You're going to be going home in five days um, because of your stroke. And she goes, Pam, that stroke was a year ago. Why? <laughs> And I'm like, oh, not quite a year. You know, like, uh-oh. Like, so some days she's really quite with it. And um, you would think, oh, my gosh. Um, so, yeah, the five days just goes on and on and on. Longest five days ever. Well, it's funny because you said that sometimes she thinks she works here. Uh-huh. And there was an, an afternoon when I was here, and my mom and her other friend, Diane, um, and where Diane, the other Diane, gets very confusing because that's my mom's name. We're convinced they needed to leave. They needed to get the hell out of here. This was a horrible place, blah, blah, blah. It was humorous, except it wasn't. And I finally got the two Dianes to take the dog into the courtyard. And your mom wanted to make sure that I was looking out for Mrs. So-and-so. And I don't remember the Mrs. name. Mrs. Mullins. Ma- she thinks your mom's Mrs. Mullins. Her okay, boss. that's funny because I have a friend <laughs> yeah. whose last name is that. But it wasn't any of the two ladies' names because she was very concerned Mrs. Mullins was going to get fired. And if that happened, there was going to be this uproar and blah, blah, blah. And I was trying so hard not to laugh because I'm thinking, whatever. Like, what drama did you have in your work life? So that's kind of interesting that she thinks she works here. Uh Uh-huh. She thinks, yeah. For a while, she thought she was my mother-in-law. And they do resemble. Your mom resembles my mother-in-law, which is really funny. That must be hard for people who already have memory yeah. issues. It's like, wait, you look like X, but you're actually Y, and that's funny. Yeah, but no, no. So she thinks she's, she still thinks she's Mrs. Mullins. From She thinks they work together. Okay, yeah. that's interesting, yeah. uh-huh. which explains why my mom's confused a lot. 
<laughs> That's hysterical. Um, but you said you moved her into the assisted living part of the community first. Yes, she was there from December until March. Okay. And she had a little apartment, Darlene, on the second floor. And she was actually doing well, but kept saying, I know what you kids are up to. I don't want to stay here. I want to go home as soon as this gets better. And so it was very difficult, yeah. And then she'd had her stroke, and um, early one morning they had found her. Oh, dear. So we immediately took her straight to John Mayer and Concord. So when she was here, she didn't really acclimate to the having people that kind of wait on you. Nope, she didn't enjoy that. She likes to do everything herself and likes to stay busy, and she's always been a go-getter. She's always up and going and doing 20 things at one time. So she likes to do more, move more. And I think um, some days she loves it here. Like today, she was fine here. It's okay, she says. And then some days she's ready to go. There's not enough to do. It's too boring, she says. Oh, yeah, it's a horrible place, <laughs> and police need to be called. I've, I've texted you about some yeah. of those com- uh-huh. conversations. Those she's are... going to report them because they work yes. her too much. Yes, <laughs> yes, I always love those conversations So I just have her. to go with all the fun stories and just go along with it. Yeah, there isn't much else you could do. Yeah. Well, since you had the experience of the negative experience of having her move into the assisted living, looking back, is there anything that you could have or might have done differently or some advice you could give to people whose family members really should be in assisted living but are fighting it every step of the way? I would say um, when you first start thinking about it, do it. You know, we all talked about it for probably two years, Mm. knowing it should have been done. And um, it's it's amazing once you do it, um, just the relief in your heart. You know, you don't worry at night, did she turn the stove off? Yeah. In the middle of the night, is she walking out in the neighborhood? Um, just silly little things like that, but, you know, all safety issues. And she was at falling a lot, and is she on the floor? If she didn't answer the phone, I'd have to call the neighbor to run over and see if she was there. And So I would definitely encourage people, when you get that thought, start looking at places, get, like, you know, your top three. And if your loved one's able to go with you and, you know, help, because my mom had said, oh, if I ever go and when I want to stay in Concord. And I did have money down at Concord, and then my sister moved further away. My brother's at the tail end of Clayton, and I thought, why am I going to keep running back to Concord? I'm literally up the street. I can come as much as I need to. So I knew this was the right place as soon as I walked in. You can just, you just feel it. You just know. (laughs) That's how I felt, especially when they said mom could keep her dog. Yeah. I've I've said in other episodes that I practically threw money at them because we were in such a, you know, tumultuous time with my dad on hospice and not sure what we were going to do, and... It was awful. So, yeah, when they said she could keep the dog, it was like, fine, here, yep. here's her so stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. essentially, when you start feeling like your loved one should be in an assisted living, pull the Band-Aid off and just do I it. I would do it. It's the hardest thing in the world you will probably ever do. Yep. But you can't feel guilty. You um, you have to do it because you're doing the whole thing out of love, you know. And my mom worked in a care facility for years. I mean, all my life. She was a caregiver to others, and I remember all the stories she would come home and tell me, you know, they need to be in a home or they need to be here. So I know, you know, that helped me in my heart make that decision because I know she would, if she was still without the dementia, she would probably be okay with coming. Mm, That helps. Yeah. Because I knew for a long time my mom kept saying, well, I don't want to end up like my mother. I don't want to end up like my mother. And she would say this, and I would in the back of my mind go well <laughs> guess what you know <laughs> too late because that's where you're headed and I know my aunt had my grandmother I think my grandmother ended up in a nursing home for a while and I guess it was really bad so my mom's only contact with some sort of care was negative yeah so yeah I mean she oh well, the day we moved her in here it was horrible it was the worst than the day my dad died well, it was very hard when we moved my mom in, and it was hard, you know, for the, probably the first two weeks because I did give her her phone because she loves her phone. While well, I was getting, like, 15 phone calls a day, I don't like it here. Get me out of here. The bed's too high. This They're not doing this. Da, da, da. And then finally I had to have them take the phone out of her room, and that was very hard for me to call and do. Um, and then slowly as we all started, you know, um, monitoring our visits to her, she, you could tell, was kind of getting a little more involved in doing stuff and playing bingo and because she's very social um, and she seemed to be okay with everything. So I was sad when she had her stroke and she had to come over here, but I mean, 
I had searched many facilities, and this by far is the nicest memory care one. I, I agree, because I live literally a mile up the hill from one, which obviously would be even more convenient for me, Yeah. but it's darker, and my husband went while my dad was in the hospital. This was in December 2016. He went and checked it out because, I'm not sure why he went, but... He did, and he literally came home pale, like a ghost, like he had just come from a concentration camp. And he said, I would never put your parents there. Oh, yeah, it's hard. I remember going, spending quite a few months. And my brother and sister went with me for some also. But one particular day I was by myself, and I remember sitting in my car after some just crying, crying. And they said, you're going to know when you walk in what feels right. And as soon as I walked in here, it just I felt my mom there. I just felt like it was her new home. We didn't have a lot of time to get that feeling because my dad passed away March 2nd. We moved her in on March 16th. So there was a lot of drama and just upheaval for all that time. But I, the day we moved her in, I almost, almost changed my mind because we moved in. We were bringing her stuff in, my sister and I, and... One of the residents had a stuffed animal down the back of their pants. And another one, as soon as you cracked open the door, he's headed toward the light like a zombie headed towards the forest. And it was, I'm like, I don't think she belongs here, but she does. But it was horrible. Yeah. And then when my husband and my brother-in-law brought my mom here, you know, she cried and I don't belong here. And why are you doing this to me? It was horrible. But she's, it, the, um... She'd been here probably two or three months, and I came for a visit, and she was following along behind this one gal who was determined to use the telephone. And my mom saw me and said, oh, great, come, you know, come with me, come with me. I have to help my friend. And I, when she said friend, it was like somebody said, you just won the, the jumbo lotto, yeah. and you know, you're, you're a billionaire now because it was just the best thing. And you know, now she's friends with your mom. And well, yeah, other just ladies. like when I walked in today. Yeah, they were all they were together on the bed talking, and yeah, that's such a good feeling. It's like you feel good, like oh, you know what? They really do like it here. Yeah, I th- <laughs> she, I was surprised because I figured it would take far, far longer to acclimate because I knew she didn't want to be here, yeah. and she, I know she hid her her Alzheimer's for years. My dad was hiding a lot of it for my sister and I. I think. So I, I just had the I just had the most negative thought that it was just gonna take forever. And yeah. when it didn't, it was just you know, it was wonderful and you know, i I come in and she's sitting around chatting. She doesn't participate in a lot of the activities, I think, because her short term memory is pretty shot and her long term memory is hit and miss, mostly miss. So I think it's hard. I try if I'm here I try to get them to participate just because Yeah. I think it's very boring to sit around and yeah, tell the same stories. It all depends on the day. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I only come once a week because, you know, I work and it's it's challenging. Yes, and I'm trying to set my boundaries too because when she first came in, I was coming all the time. And then even when I drove by, just because I live right here, I would feel so guilty if I didn't stop. So now I'm trying to really set my boundaries because my sister comes once a week, my brother comes. So I come like twice now. I've been coming like two to three times just a week. Um, and that's perfect. That helps. I yeah. come for about yeah. two to three hours. And so. see, when I come on shorter visits. Yeah. Yeah. If I have to do a short visit, then I'll come a second day yeah. if I can. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, how did you guys? How did you guys decide on this place? Did you decide? Um, we looked at uh, several. We went out. We also before we um, decided on a facility, we looked at regular care group homes. Um, yeah, like and board and just, care? Board and care. So we just didn't feel my mom was there. My mom's very social, and a lot of them are, you know, five to six people. And everyone we went to, we just, all three of us, just didn't feel that was the right fit. So um, we just, yeah, we just started on a day hunt and started searching for um, a friend of mine's mom and dad were both here. So she had highly, highly recommended it. And then... Um, I had come at one time before, and then I had a friend that worked here, and then when I walked in the front over on the assisted living side, it was just very welcoming, and um, 
I just knew this was the place. Um, and I'd already had money down on another place at the time. Mm. So I had gotten my money. I called my brother and sister and asked them if they would come down and look at this place. And they both did within the week and agreed. They really thought it was nice. And liked. I liked the memory care side better on this facility. And I knew when we put my mom in assisted living, this was the transitioning point she was going to go to. So I had to keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to have to move her again. Oh, gosh, no. So um, that was another deciding factor. And that's what I would tell you if you're looking at some place and you're, you know, make sure they have a memory care. Yeah. Um, Because I'm not far from uh, assisted living. There's basically one... It's probably two miles from my house, but yeah. all they have is assisted living. Right. And it's a really right. nice facility, too, but, you know, I knew that my mom would need memory care. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, my parents' house is paid for, and my dad had absolutely no, I mean, I don't know. It's like no no plan for what would happen if they needed help, which is one of the reasons for the podcast is to help people realize what goes into dealing with somebody in this which is why I'm interviewing family members because like you said you thought about it for two years um, before you actually pulled the plug and it's probably two years you would have liked to have a little bit more relief and less stress and worry it was a huge relief let's take a quick break and hear a message from our presenting sponsor sponsors allow us to bring you this podcast free of charge every week something we absolutely love to do MBK Senior Communities is dedicated to being the preferred senior living provider in the markets they serve. They create warm, inviting living spaces in desirable locations. They offer a variety of services and programs to enrich the lives of residents and their families. And by getting to know their residents, their personal preferences, and their individual needs, MBK Senior Communities can better contribute to their well-being and provide care that's right for them. They are committed to enhancing independence and quality of life, serving others the way they prefer to be treated, and providing care that is delivered with integrity, dignity, and compassion. Currently serving the Western United States, but expanding. Why not contact your local community for a tour and see for yourself why most of their residents say they felt at home from their very first visit? You can get more information by visiting their website at mbk seniorliving.com or call 949-242-1400. It was a huge relief. I could sleep through the night not worrying because I always called her in the morning before I left for work and called her, you know, sometimes on my lunch and then again at night and then I would go there right when I got off work to shower her and do all her meds and so it was it created very long stressful days for me sometimes. Yeah, and stress is not good for our no, brains. No. And now when I come, we do nice, you know, I'm not arguing to take a shower or you've got to take your medicine. It's more we're doing, we go out to lunch or we'll go get coffee or she'll go to the store with me or, you know, we're kind of having fun, enjoyable time. So that's good to know yeah. too. Cause I, I feel the same way with my mom because when I, um, try to deal with her, whatever needs are, you know, needing to be handled, she gets really crossways with me or she, she, I, asks how how is it that I'm the parent but now you're the parent and it's like <laughs> I don't want to be your parent <laughs> I'm kind of, my daughter's 26 I'm pretty much done with that too so it's definitely better just be able to come and do yeah, nice things yeah. or go out I took and her for know, a she's drive one day care of. Yeah, they take great care of them she's always clean she always looks great she's always happy yeah also helps you know once we connected you know right. was it about 4 months ago at the Alzheimer's support groups where we connected, then it's like if I'm here and your mom's trying to bust out, yeah. and then you just said when you yeah. see my mom, yeah. you know, you never have any concerns, and I know if you did, you'd contact oh, yeah. me. So Absolutely. that's that's really helpful yeah. too. You have to network with the people that are in there too, you know, to help each other out. Also, yeah, I would definitely too encourage you to get into a support group. I've been in mine for four years, and it's the hard one of the hardest things. I think the hardest groups I've ever had to walk into by myself. Yeah. You know, but I had, I knew I had to educate myself on this disease because I knew nothing about it. Nothing. Um, Even though I work in special ed, there's a lot of connections with the brain in certain um, disabilities. But I thought I have got to, to help my mom more, to help my, and I invited my family members, but um, no one, you know, chose to come, which is fine. 
um, I'll share with them things that come up, but um, I knew I had to do it for me. Yeah, it was funny. The first group that I went to and I saw you and I remember thinking, oh my God, oh God, why is that? I recognize that <laughs> yeah. woman. Is she a client? Where do I know her from? Oh God, oh God. I'm like, why did I come? La, 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 la. And then it turned out that you, yeah. I knew you from here. And I was like, oh, thank gosh. You know, because living in the town where I live in is very small. When you live there and work there and we're very involved there, sometimes you almost feel like, well, I should probably go to a support group like a couple towns over <laughs> just so you can have a little bit of the anonymity. But no, it's OK. But that was just funny because I remember you know, looking across the table going, oh, God, why do I know her? Oh, geez. <laughs> that was funny. So you said you got you thought about this for two years and, you know, a lot of people, I think, don't come to these kind of communities because they are very expensive. Very. So, you know, does the I'm hoping your family isn't having to help offset pay for this. No, we sold my mom's house and she had a reverse reverse mortgage. So we paid that back and then put the rest in at your revocable trust. And um, because my dad was a veteran. I just received in the first of the year, um, he qualified for a small portion to help her each month, which was very helpful. Yeah. So it's still, though, very, very um, yeah, it's expensive, expensive. but, um, you know, needed. So, yeah, we're doing the best we can. And right now she's fine. Yeah. We rented out my mom's house. Between that and her Social Security and my dad's investments, we feel like she should have plenty of money until she's no longer with us. Yeah. But it's still, you know, when they say, oh, the rent's going up $200. And, um, other, it just seems like every time I turn around, there's more expenses with her. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. I, I just called a mobile groomer for the dog because driving over here and picking up the dog and take, you know, it's, it's an amazing time suck. Yeah, it so, is. So, and I'm, you know, I'm hoping that I can work with somebody to come here and do Misty and I know um, the assisted living side is looking for somebody that would like service the community as a whole. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. so they could just come to the parking lot. Yeah, and just yeah. do everybody's dog. It would probably be like a whole day thing if they yeah. if they coordinated it properly. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many dogs are over there, but there's three here, and I know Xavier must somebody must bathe his dogs. But um, I know that they needed their nails trimmed before Christmas, so I brought my dog toenail trimmers. Oh, that was sweet. Yeah, because I don't use them because mine go to the groomers every six weeks, so yeah. they're fine. And I didn't want his dogs to end up with toenails, you know, growing back into their paws. That's That would be horrible. Yeah. I, that's probably a surgery to fix, so... It's definitely, you know, you don't just drop off your family member and not ever no. deal with unless you don't come and visit. And I could never do that. I mean, like I said, I still struggle with the boundaries on, oh, I should go see my mom today. I literally pass it to get home. And, you know, I'm like, nope, she it, she actually does well, too, if I just leave her some days to socialize. And she has her routine. She gets her paper every morning. I have it delivered to her. She reads her paper, and she will read it and tell us what's going on. It's amazing. And... She has her coffee, they, and they said she does it here. She gets her coffee, then she goes back to her room to read her paper, and so she's got her little routine down. Mornings are definitely better, and yeah. afternoons. Sometimes at night she's a little more confused, which is normal. Yeah, it's typical. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm looking for somebody to interview on sundowners and why and why, how, why it happens and how to deal with it. Yeah. I was driving my mom from my hometown back to her hometown, at twilight so it started out somewhat light and got pitch black because this was in december and that was the most bizarre car ride i've ever had with my mother because she starts asking me if i like my house and she said i should pay her grandparents for it now her grandparents passed away before i was born and my house is only 11 years old so (laughs) it's like um i'm pretty sure this wasn't your parents or your grandparents and just it, you know, I was looking at driving, you know, because we're out in the country, and I'm looking at it from the perspective of somebody whose memory doesn't work properly. I'm like, we could have been anywhere. It could have been on Mars, you know, anywhere. It was just strange. It was very strange. I was very glad to bring her back home to somebody else because that was a long half an hour car <laughs> ride. So, how else do you, you and your you said your siblings, they come regularly too? Yeah, my sister lives in Lodi, and she comes like once a week, and my brother comes like once a week. He's in Clayton. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll try and get together. You know, if they have little brunches here or something, sometimes we'll, some of us will come together um, and 
she wishes she had a phone. She did tell me she wished she had a phone to call everyone. But I just started for her birthday, told my her grandchildren. I gave the address out. So everyone's been mailing her cards, which is nice. I kind of want to keep that up because she loves getting her mail, too. Um, so that's fun for her. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, you said she likes to read the paper. And, yeah. You know, um, that's the stuff that my mom used to do, and she doesn't do that stuff anymore because I don't, it doesn't sink in anymore. Well, it was, I mean, as soon as she came here, she's like, now what about my paper? It needs to get transferred here. She, and the other day I came, and she's like, I, sometimes they don't deliver it over here yet, depending on the staff, because mm. they deliver them all to assisted living. Right. And then they come over on this side. And so she'll say, Pam, I didn't get my paper today. So I'll walk over there. Sure enough, there it is. So she's very, still, still really good about that. That's, yeah. that's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of Misty, Misty. Definitely. <laughs> Hi, Misty. So, so we can wrap up because I think we're about to be invaded with moms. What advice would you give? You said definitely do it sooner rather than yes. later. What other yes. advice would you give people in our position or people that are about to be in our our shoes with this journey don't feel guilty it's okay to um they're called fiblets to make little lie stories because that's kind of where you have to that's what's going to get you through life um know that you're doing it out of love for them and out of protection for them and their safety try and educate yourself as much as you can the alzheimer's support group has a beautiful beautiful counseling team that if you call the number 24 hours a day they're open they will answer I've called them so many times when I was in the process of moving my mom in just with questions you have and they never try and hurry you off the phone they counsel you they're just filled with lots of good support um read books I mean I I tried like I said to educate myself on as much as I could about um the dementia because there's so many different kinds you know um it's Alzheimer's, but that's like the umbrella. Then everything, whatever that your loved one has, falls under a different um, umbrella. So my mom has vascular dementia, which most of it is caused. She's had high blood pressure since she was like 30. So mm. um, a lot of that is from that. And then, you know, when we get older, a lot of us just get dementia. Um, so the combination of both of those. And it's a little slower moving than Alzheimer's. So, um, you know, she still knows all of us, still knows everyone in the family, still knows, you know, where everyone works and what's going on. And that's, I feel very blessed for that because I have other friends that, you know, <laughs> they get there and their parent doesn't know who they are. And I, I hope that never happens. But I'm preparing myself for that day because that could possibly very well happen. I think that happens a little bit at a time because there's yeah. times my mom thinks yeah. that I'm her aunt or I. I'm, that I'm her sister, my aunt, and I'll correct her, which I probably shouldn't, but I find yeah, it really... Yeah, I just stu- go with it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I guess my ego gets in the way with that one, but it's like, no, I'm not your sister. Who am I? And she'll figure it out after a few minutes, but I, I keep waiting um, because I figure someday she won't remember, yeah. and I'll have to tell her, or I'll have to tell her a lot more, not forcefully, but... Right now, I kind of joke reminder. And, yeah, you and just kind of go with it. Like, my daughter's due any day. Her due date is actually my first grandbaby, Friday the 13th. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> and Kate keeps asking her. We were all together for Easter. My mom did great. My mom kept saying, Caitlin, when's the baby due? And Kate would go, Nanny, the day after your, your birthday, April 13th. And she's like, Pam, our birthday is April 12th. And so I go, yeah, I know. Can you believe it? We're having birthdays. I just kind of go with it because my mom's a twin. So for some reason, sometimes... You know, oh, I'm, that other, I'm that other twin. But then I would that say to, really interesting. to connect with them as much as you can, you know, even if you're not in the area, write letters because they're back in the day when, you know, they liked the letter writing and to read things. Or you can also call. You know, they always tell me, you can call here and we'll put her on the phone. I've done that before. I've called and they bring the phone to her. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind, too, to um, do that, to keep in touch with them also if you can't visit often. Have you ever tried Skyping her or FaceTiming? No, my niece, um, Easter, my nep- nieces and nephews did, and she was so funny because that's all new to her with the phone yeah. and everything. We were cracking up. Yeah. <laughs> so is that something you'd suggest, or is it just kind of case by case? Yeah, I think it's I think it's day by day and case by case. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Because she's talked on the cell phone several times to my kids and stuff, and you know, I'll call like her grand- other grandchildren and put the phone up to her, and she does pretty well. She does pretty good with it. 
So, and I know that's not always going to be the case, and I'm not always going to be able to take her. If you put your loved one in the facility, I would say if they're able to go out, take them out. Because there's going to be a day that you're not going to be able to do that. So you want to create those memories while you still can. Yeah, one of the nicest visits I've had recently was Mom and I um, just took a drive and we went up in the hills. Oh, yeah, that's great. You know, because she always says she, likes, she loves the color of the sky. And which I find very fascinating that she doesn't she doesn't talk about the cloudy sky. She likes the blue. Yeah. So I thought, and you know, she always talks about the trees and stuff. So I thought, well, let's go. You know, spring is starting to happen. Let's go and look at the trees. And yeah. I'm waiting for it to finally warm up so we can actually just go and yes. have a little snack. Sit outside. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, it was like a drive up to the parking lot. And then a drive back because it was too cold and it's not a it's not a hike she can do. Right. So right. It's not, I'm not going to drag my mom on a hike. But that was a really nice drive, and so I'm definitely going to do that. Yeah. I think that was the day your mom and the other Diane were concerned oh. that my mom was going to get fired, <laughs> and they were trying to leave. She, well, sometimes when she leaves, when my mom leaves with us for lunch or something, she'll go, oh, "I better get back because I'm going to get fired if I don't get back. I, I'm working the night shift or whatever." Oh, that's funny. And so we joke, you know. So we always say, "No, we already told him you're going to be gone for the night shift, so you don't have to be back right on time." Oh, okay, okay. But yeah. Those stories, that was the one thing, and I, I should repeat it at more episodes. When um, I was doing the paperwork for mom for moving in here, one of the staff basically said, do not invite your mom to our reality. I think we were discussing, I didn't really know how to tell, what how to handle the questions about where my dad was. Yeah. And I know from dealing with my grandmother, who also had dementia, that I mean, there was times she'd burst into tears. She would think that my grandfather had left her for another woman, which you know maybe I guess if there's nice pretty angels, but he didn't leave her for another woman. He died, and my aunt would say no, he died, and of course she would then be even more upset because that was the first time she realized he died because she didn't remember. And I did not want to go through that loop with my mom, and that's when they said, oh no, don't invite your mom to our reality. And there's lots of times she'll ask me. You know, does my husband know where we're at? And does, I just you know, revert the question. Oh, yeah. I just tell her, oh, yeah. yeah. Or um, yeah. she went to the vet with me one day, and I, you know, she's like, do I have enough money for this? And she's digging around in her purse, which I'm not even sure where the wallet went, but all the pertinent cards and stuff are with my sister and I. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, Dad gave me, you know, see, he gave me a debit card. You know, it's the one with the flag on it, which is the one for the trust account. You know, so it's just, it's much easier just to say, oh, yeah, I'm sure, yeah, he knows where we're right, at. Right, You know, most people would be like, yeah, he knows where we're at. Yeah. And so it's been, it's been an er- interesting learning experience. Very interesting. Very. Yes. Yeah. And every day is a different day. Some that people, is true. Yeah, every day is a different day. Sometimes she's so right on and sometimes definitely off. So it's just part of that I have more disease. off days than on with mom. There was one day I'm trying to remember the details but she was really with it she was very up and upbeat and you know you could just see there was like a little more sparkle in her eyes yeah but most days it's it's just confusion so but I I, you know I always try and look back and go you know what but she's happy yeah you know in that confusion there's happiness and joy somewhere Um, well that's that's one nice thing about not remembering two minutes ago is you know you get she got into a spat with another resident about her dog the one that the run resident that thinks everything belongs to her, she kind of glommed on to Misty, and Mom was so upset, um, she was shaking, and she hadn't been here that long, and then she had threatened to knock this gal's block off. Yeah, because the I was trying to put Misty in Mom's room. The other resident was not happy because I was taking her dog. She grabbed my mom's arm. My mom said, if you touch me one more time, I'm going to knock your block off. And I thought, oh, my gosh. Uh, you know, hoo-hoo. better break up the old lady fight because we're not letting mom get kicked out. So I put, pushed my mom out into the courtyard, and she literally was shaking. She was Aww. so upset. And I just went with, oh, it's so terrible. Her mind is so bad. I, mean, I just yeah. went right into pity. Yeah. Let's pity, pity, pity. And in about two minutes, thank God it was right before dinner, within two minutes, she had no clue what had happened. Yeah. I'm the one that was going home shaking, thinking, yikes. And that's that. there is a blessing a yeah. little bit to this disease. Yeah, like sometimes if she's like, I'm going with you, I'm going with you, I'm going home with you. And then I have to kind of sneak out. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I sneak out. I get so upset. But I think five minutes from now, she won't even remember. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's times I figure by the time I'm backing out of the parking lot, they're having dinner and they're yeah. happy. And yeah. 
whatever happened before. Because sometimes she gets really clingy when I leave. Yeah. Not as often, but, you know, sometimes, so... It'll be an interesting journey. Yeah, I'll check. I'll check back in with you and it is an next season journey. Yes. Yeah, that's what I yes. keep telling anybody. Join us on this journey. And, uh huh. You know, you said read books, get informed, call the Alzheimer's organization, uh, and listen to this group. podcast. Yes, because this is actual people yes. in the trenches. Because I it, support groups are well, kind of like the podcast too. Pe- people that are going through it, you learn so much from too, or you relate, and you just feel that comfort. Yeah, and it's nice when you can help somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, I've helped other people. People have helped me. So it's definitely a good thing. Yeah. yeah. And with that, it's probably getting close to their dinner time. So we'll wrap it up for today. And I thank you so much. And thank I'm you. sure we'll see you around the community here. I hope you found that conversation helpful. N- getting to know Pam and connecting with her, being able to text her and say, hey, your mom's trying to escape. Having her text me and say, saw your mom. She's doing really good. Sometimes she fills me on what mom's done or mom got her hair done today. It just really helps me take better care of myself and my mom. And there will be more interviews with families to come. So stay tuned and join us on this journey. Thank you for listening to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us dealing with a loved one with memory loss. If you enjoyed today's episode or previous episodes, please go to wherever you download your podcasts, iTunes or Google Play, and rate and review us. Doing this allows others to find us and gain the knowledge and help that we are sharing. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you again next week.